This is the, the upraised stent. It's got a, uh, a red tag on it, which is a lock that you remove before you deploy the stent. We've checked at the top end that the stent is completely in the sheath. And by using our landmarks, we've marked the bottom end of the stent. It looks like we've got a pretty good uh, landing place there for the stent at the bottom end. And then what you simply do is, is a triaxial system is you deploy with your thumb. Now, as you start the deployment, the stents have a tendency to want to jump forward a little bit. So the important thing is to watch the back marker, which has been pretty stable on this one. Okay, and that's opened up quite nicely there. Uh, and then we'll go and check the top end, but we'll, we're going to take another stent to take this around the bend into the common iliac vein. So if we have a, a 1490, please, or 1480. We'll check the ivis. So now we'll put the ivis back in and we'll check the top landing zone of our stent. Can you just take it off mag for a sec, please? And what we're going to have is the overlap of the stents will be in the external iliac vein on this. So that's an important place to have overlap. We don't want the overlap at the bottom of the pelvis. Yeah, that looks nice actually. So we're just going up through the stent with Ivis and that all looks good, that's the internal. Yeah, it's just sitting at the bottom of the pelvis if we do a lateral. So can we just do a full lateral just to see where that stent is sitting? I just want to see if it's pointing down in the pelvis or coming up and around the bend. If it's coming up and around the bend then we, then we might be okay with just a single stent. It's still pointing a bit backwards, isn't it? But the trouble is there, we've got the internal coming off and we're just sitting with the stent on the bottom of the pelvis. That's at a sort of bend point, point of flexion. So I'd rather have the flexion going up and around. So we'll just extend it a couple of centimeters north. That's the confidence. Yeah, so that's getting to confidence there, yeah. So actually, in reality, we would have been better off choosing a 14-120 and having the overlap lower. Yeah. Yeah. Because with it there, we, we wanted the overlap down there. So I could have, we could have used the 14-120 and then come around the bend and had the overlap in the external iliac properly. Yeah. So if it was 19... Yeah, right, we're going to do 120 yeah. and then a 120 and that would be the full sentence. Yeah, so this, this is less important than overlapping under the ligament. Yeah. So we haven't really seen problems there, but you, get, you can get a little bit of tenting and straightening. So we're just discussing there the principles of where you want to overlap and we probably could have used a slightly shorter stent when we, the first stent that we put in and instead of using this long one, uh, to, to try and keep the overlap a little bit further down in the external iliac vein, which is a much more stable uh, place to overlap stents. So the same thing as the last stent. Uh, yeah, go. So the main principles here are good to good, but also paying attention to points where the veins, where you're going to get flexion in hip movement in the vein where you can start to get problems with the inflow or outflow by creating a transition point in, a, in an unstable region uh, that can also cause problems with the stents long, uh, in the long run. Can you take it off, Max, please? 